Welcome again back to the Museum of Native American History in Bentonville, Arkansas. Uh, we are broadcasting live for the museum and you're, this year we're open and you're welcome to come in and sit in the great room and watch this on our big screen. But it's my honor as we crisscross the country with our presenters to say how happy and honored we are to join hands with the Mitchell Museum of the American Indian in Evanston, Illinois. And also for me to introduce the amazing Josie Starr for all of you boys and girls of all ages to join in with her presentation today. Good morning, Josie. Hello, good morning, good morning. Um, I'm happy to be here with you guys today. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen. First, well, first let me introduce myself. Uh, thank you for the introduction. Again, my name is Josie Starr. I work here at the Mitchell Museum of the American Indian. We're located in Evanston, Illinois, just outside of Chicago. And today I'm going to be sharing a birch bark craft with you and a little bit of information about birch bark. So I'm just going to go ahead and talk a little bit about the museum. So first I want to start with the land acknowledgement. Uh, the Mitchell Museum of the American Indian is located on and near the traditional home and meeting place for many tribal nations. The museum acknowledges and honors the Three Fires Confederacy, Potawatomi, Odawa, and Ojibwe nations, the Menominee, the Ho-Chunk, and many other indigenous peoples who call this place home, past, present, in future. Um, the Midget Museum of the American Indian is one of only a handful of museums across the country that focuses exclusively on the art, history, and culture of American Indian and First Nation peoples from throughout the United States and Canada. It promotes public understanding of cultural diversity through first voice perspectives. The Mitchell Museum's mission is to promote and share a deeper understanding of Native American peoples through the collection, preservation, and interpretation of their traditional and contemporary art and material culture. The museum was founded by John and Betty Seabury Mitchell, who donated their personal collection to Kendall College in 1977. We have an annual attendance of around uh, 10,000 people. This was before COVID uh, from all around the world. Uh, since its founding, the Mitchell Museum has evolved into a cherished resource of collections, exhibitions, programs, and activities that introduce visitors from throughout the Chicago region to the cultures of native people. Uh, we just reopened uh, on August 14th. Some of our exhibits include the newest one is uh, Reclaiming Cultural Treasures. We partnered with three other museums uh, to be able to bring this exhibit to you. It's about repatriation. This is one of the most exciting exhibits that I've seen here. Uh, some of the other stories or exhibits that we've got here include Stunning Stories and Native American Stories, Heritage Markers, Local Native American History and Cultures, and we have a permanent exhibit, which our tour is based off of, called a regional tour of American Indian cultures. So, like I said, we are um, located in Evanston, uh, just outside of Chicago. We're not too far from the city of Chicago. Um, this is uh, our exhibit, a regional tour of American Indian cultures. And then um, I just wanted to share a couple Ojibwe words with you. Again, um, I am enrolled up in Fort Berthel, North Dakota, uh, the three affiliated tribes, but I'm also from Wikwemkong, Ontario, and I'm Omaha from Macy, Nebraska. So I grew up here in Chicago area. Um, I am learning the Ojibwe language. So some words I want to share with you today would be Ani, which is how we say hello. Buju is also another way of how we greet uh, greet each other. So you can also say Ani Buju. Um, Mino Gijgad, it means it's a beautiful day. Not so much here in Chicago today, it is a little rainy, uh, but Mino Gijgad, Mino Gijap, uh, good morning. This is the way that we greet each other. Uh, I greet my family with, with these words and we try to use a little bit of the language uh, every, every day. So we have um, the birch bark canoes here. So this is the one that we have here in our exhibit and the birch bark canoe was the main form of transportation for the Anishinaabe people here in the woodlands area. Uh, so the craft that we're gonna do today um, is a, the woodland birch bark. We have, um, it's just a little bitty paper cut out. There is a PDF link. Um, it's available on our website. It should also be available on the museum's website as well. Um, so today we're just going to talk a little bit and go over this woodland birch bark canoe and I'm going to talk a little bit about um, what birch bark canoes were used for while we're doing the craft. So in the template, 
you've got, um, you should have three pieces. And then the only materials you're gonna need to be able to do this presentation or to be able to do this uh, craft is you're gonna need the template. You're gonna need some scissors. You're gonna need some glue and you're gonna need some paper clips. And then you start out by cutting all three of the pieces out. There's three main pieces. The middle piece you're gonna leave intact and just cut around the outside. And then the outside pieces you're gonna cut around and those little tabs you're gonna cut around that as well. And then once these pieces are cut out, you're gonna go ahead and start gluing um, the outside pieces and connect them to the inside pieces. So I'm gonna be doing this presentation along with you guys. This is a pretty quick and easy uh, craft that you can do. And what it shows is that it actually shows um, what an actual birch bark canoe would look like. Typically birch bark canoes are about six feet long. Uh, the one we have downstairs might be a little bit longer than we have on our permanent exhibit here. If you ever happen to come to the Mitchell Museum, you can see um, the life-size canoe that we've got downstairs. And if you're in the Chicago area the, for the next two weeks, um, or the next three weeks, the Northwestern University Center for Native American and Indigenous Research over just down the street here in Evanston, um, they are having a canoe building pro uh, community project. It's open to the public. You can find more information on their website, uh, but they are opening it up and inviting everyone to come learn as they, their artist in residence, Wayne Villier from uh, Lac de Flambeau, Wisconsin is um, doing the presentation and he's opening it up to community to be able to come in. So you can see um, a life-size canoe getting built right here in Evanston and they will be doing a boat launch once it's completed. That's really exciting. So this here is a picture of birch bark, of the birch bark tree. And the way that the, the canoes are actually built is it's made from the birch bark. We take the birch bark off of the tree. There's only one time a year that you're able to harvest the birch bark. And what they do is they go out, you don't harvest from the same trees, you go after the larger trees. And when you go out there, you're gonna go out and you, as you can see, you can kind of score the birch bark and then it'll come off in a big, a big sheet. And those sheets are used for, um, for the outside of the canoe. And in our template here, you can see on the outside gunwales that there's the canoe, uh, the birch bark. The inside is also, uh, they also put other ribs and stuff inside the birch bark to help hold it together. And what they do, which you can also see in the outside of the template, is uh, they hold it together with roots or string or they tie it together. And they also used uh, tree sap to help um, with the seams to be able to make it, um, to be able to make it waterproof so it can float in the water to, and to keep the water out. All of this can be seen in the little details on the outside gunwale. So as we're sitting here cutting out our, our gunwale pieces, you can see all of the details in this little craft that we have here. And again, here you can also see uh, the tree sap and the seams where the sap is applied to the outside of the canoe. And this is our canoe that we have here at the Mitchell Museum. One of the things that we used um, the canoes for was to go out wild rice harvesting. And you take the canoes you go into the, out into the water, into the wild rice fields, like pictured here. And what they've got are called um, knockers. They're wooden sticks. So you got one person in the back um, that's steering the canoe and you're going through the wild rice fields. And then the person's got the knockers and they're taking and they're just tapping on the tops of the, the plants and they're knocking off the wild rice in the canoe. And once it gets into the canoe, like the whole canoe, the bottom of the canoe is all filled 
with the wild rice and then it go they take it back onto the land and then they start doing the the harvesting and the the parching of the the wild rice the work this right here is a birch bark winnowing tray and this is what they'd actually put the birch bark in once the canoes come back on the land and the wild rice is in there and then they take the the birch bark uh, winnowing baskets and they start sh um, shaking them to get the chaff off of the birch bark or off of the wild rice. And so it flies away and then they go into um, parching it or they, they roast it a little bit to be able to, um, so that it, they can store it for the winter months. They still do this today up in um, Wisconsin, Minnesota and Michigan. Some of the tribes will open um, to, the, to the public or for community members to be able to go out and participate in their wild rice harvesting activities that they have. And they show you all the traditional ways um, that you can, you can go through and get the, get the wild rice. Okay, so we're still cutting along, cutting out our insider outside gun whales. And then once we got all of these pieces cut out, you're gonna have the three separate pieces. You're gonna have the little uh, the little tabs cut out. And then we're gonna use our glue sticks that we've got. You should all have some glue sticks available. Um, Elmer's glue, school's glue, Elmer's school's glue will work. And then you're gonna go ahead and apply the glue to the outside uh, gunwale. And you're going to go ahead and glue that right onto your inside gun wheel. On the out, like it, you can see where it's going to go. It's going to go on the outside piece. It's going to line right up with the piece on the outside gun wheel that you can go ahead and um, glue that together. Some of the other uses for wigwas or birch bark is what we made our wigwams out of. It was the outside covering of the, the houses for Ojibwe people, for Anishinaabe people. And again, they would cut it off in the large sheets and it would go and it would cover the outside of the, the house. They would leave the hole up at the top so that there's um, room for the smoke to come out. There was the door, they left the door there and the door usually faced east to greet the morning sun as it was coming up. A lot of artists now use birch bark. Um, they make birch bark baskets. A lot of Ojibwe artists use birch bark baskets. Um, and they also make jewelry out of birch bark. They'll take the quills and then they'll dye them. There's a lot of uh, contemporary native artists that use birch bark uh, to make earrings. They make medallions. They do all kinds of intricate, um, beautiful design work using the porcupine quills. And uh, some of them, you can even follow them on Instagram to be able to see how they traditionally harvest the birch bark, how they get their porcupine quills, how they dye them. Um, those artists are always out looking, always out looking for supplies and they go out and they harvest, harvest out in the, the area that they live in. And one of the things that we do when we're out harvesting is uh, tobacco is a sacred medicine of ours. And before we take anything or before we go out harvesting, even before we go out to do the, the wild rice, to go out wild ricing, is you, you, uh, you lay your tobacco down as an offering and you give a prayer as a thanks, as a thank you. And before we take anything, you always have to give something. And that, what we do is we use tobacco for it. So we go and we take it and we can uh, set it out by the lake or you set it out by a tree and you say a small prayer, you thank creator, you thank um, the animal or the tree that's giving you something um, and you're giving something back to them. That's part of what our teachings are. So we're almost cut out with this. We got our three pieces cut out. We've got our three pieces cut out. We should have our glue sticks. All your three pieces should look like this. And you should have two pieces of the outside gunwale. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your glue stick now and you're gonna rub glue all over this side of your, your outside gunwale. Take your glue stick and rub it all over the outside of the gunwale. 
And once you got your glue on there, you're gonna go ahead and take your inside gun wheel and you're gonna take this piece and just attach it right onto the, the outside gun wheel. You're gonna line up your pieces as best you can. It doesn't have to be perfect. And then you're gonna take your other outside gun wheel piece you're going to rub your glue all over that piece as well. You're going to take your other, um, you've got your other side of your out inside gun wheel, and you're going to go ahead and just attach this piece right on there. Line it up as best you can. Get that piece glued on. So now you should have your piece that looks like this. You got your inside, your outside, and then these little tabs here, you're going to take your glue and write on the white pieces, you're going to rub your glue right on those pieces. And we're getting right to where we need, we're going to need the paper clips coming up here pretty soon. So we're going to rub the glue on our outside pieces. And then you're going to have your paper clip. This little inside piece, you're going to flip up. You're gonna take your two outside white pieces that you just put the glue on and you're gonna stick them together and you're gonna fold it. Now we take the paper clip and this paper clip is only gonna stay on here until the glue dries. So you got your paper clip on the outside. These little tabs, you can flip this piece down and these little tabs, you're gonna have glue on there and you're gonna rub the, um, you're gonna push these little tabs down to keep that piece inside. You do the same thing with your other side. Take the two pieces, attach it. You're gonna put your paper clip on there. You push it together. And your little tappy pieces are gonna get, you're gonna glue them to the inside. So now with our completed craft piece you should have that looks like this you can see on the inside you can see on the outside of it some of the tabs you might have to put some more glue on there once the glue dries you can go ahead and remove your paper clips and you've got your completed uh, birch bark canoe craft and again, on, on here, you can go ahead and you can see all of the details that, that are put onto there. You can see where the tree sap is. You can see how it's sewn together on the outside. And then the inside, you can see the rib pieces on the inside of the, the canoe craft. If you've got any questions, um, most of this information is on our website and on our Facebook page. You can also uh, reach out to me. I can go ahead and answer any questions you might have. Um, I do want to run through some um, upcoming presentations that we got here at the Mitchell Museum. On Monday, October 11th is Indigenous Peoples Day. And uh, the Mitchell Museum was instrumental in advocating for Evanston to become the first Illinois city to recognize Indigenous Peoples Day. This year, we will shine a light on one of the darkest chapters for Indigenous communities across Turtle Island, U.S. Indian boarding schools, and Canadian residential schools. This educational event will explore the government policies enacted, highlight the resiliency of survivors, and discuss the lingering tra traumatic effects on Indigenous communities. Our guest speaker is Lauren Van Schilfgaard, who is Cochiti Pueblo, <clears throat> and she's a San Manuel Banda Mission Indians Tribal Legal Development Clinic Director at UCLA School of Law. All of this information can be found on our website, mitchellmuseum.org slash IPD 2021. Uh, we hope that you can join us. We've got two separate virtual programs that you can tune in on Zoom. Ticket information is on our website. The first one is at 12 o'clock. That's our presentation for students. And then the six o'clock is a, a larger discussion that we will be having. And we've also got um, a virtual artist discussion coming up on Thursday, October 21st at 6 p.m. via Zoom, where we've got um, the co-owners of Two Guns Leather, 
co-LLC Osceola and Genevieve Redshirt from Tahlequah, Oklahoma, who specialize in handmade Native American themed leather products, where every leather product they produce is handmade by them. And that's my presentation today. I hope you guys um, have a great day. I do just want to share one more screen with you guys. And it's a couple um, I just want to say it's a couple more Ojibwe words. Um, the first word we have on the screen here is miigwech. That means thank you. You can also say chimigwech, which, like, which is like a big thank you, a huge thank you. So I just want to say miigwech, you guys. Thank you. Thank you to the Museum of Native American History out in um, Arkansas for inviting us in to come in today so I can share this, this craft presentation with you. And we don't really say goodbye. We say see you later. And one of the words that we use for that is bamapi. So Bama P, I want to say have a great day. Thank you. Thank you for having me.